pain and darkness have been a lot since the fall of man. But there must be some hope that we can rise to a higher level, that consciousness can evolve to a plane more benevolent than its counterpoint of a universe hardwired to indifference. The Fall of Hyperion is the second novel in the Hyperion Cantos, a science fiction series by American author Dan Simmons that spans four novels, Hyperion, The Fall of Hyperion, Endymion and The Rise of Endymion. The Fall of Hyperion is the stunning continuation of the epic adventure which began in the first novel and sees the reader return to the eight pilgrims that travelled to the Valley of the Time Tombs on the world of Hyperion, where the Shrike dwells, a metallic creature that can manipulate time and which is alleged to grant one wish to the members of a pilgrimage. Rather than approaching the Fall of Hyperion as a sequel to Hyperion, it's closer to being one complete novel split into two parts, which is why some feel Hyperion's ending lacks conclusion. The Fall of Hyperion is set over a thousand years in the future. Humankind has conquered space travel and has colonised hundreds of worlds. The hegemony of man is a socio-political, cultural super-entity comprising one of the primary human factions dominating our arm of the galaxy. It unifies with its laws over 150 billion human beings and over 200 worlds connected by the world web as well as many colonies in the outback and protectorate including the planet known as Hyperion. Modified humans known as Ousters live in space stations between the stars and are engaged in conflict with the hegemony. The hegemony is ruled by a dualistic system consisting of the All Thing and the Senate. The All Thing is a consensus based public forum accessible to all members of the hegemony via neural implants. The government of the hegemony is advised by the Technocore, a conglomerate of artificial intelligences which typically make predictions for the hegemony government. Worlds within the world web are linked via Farcaster portals, which offer instantaneous transportation over immense distances without any time delay. Farcaster technology was given to humanity by the AI Technocore, and no human has ever been capable of truly understanding the mechanism that makes it work. The great change is when humankind accepts its role as part of the natural order of the universe, instead of its role as a cancer. Set in the 29th century, the fall of Hyperion documents the final pilgrimage to the planet Hyperion, undertaken by eight characters whose lives have been altered due to the events regarding that world. In the first novel, each of the pilgrims told their stories, revealing why they were heading to Hyperion on the eve of battle between the Hegemony and the Ousters. The pilgrims are Braun Lamia, a private investigator from the high gravity planet of Lussus, Colonel Fedman Kassad, a former soldier born on Mars, Captain Het Mestein, a Templar whose beliefs are centred around the reverence of life and nature, Lenar Hoyt, a Jesuit priest raised and ordained on the Catholic world of Packham, Martin Salinas, a 150 year old poet, Sol Weintraub, a Jewish scholar and professor from Barnard's world, and the Consul, the former governor of Hyperion. On Hyperion, the pilgrims have travelled into the Valley of the Time Tombs, the domain of the Shrike, a humanoid entity three metres in height that has a carapace made entirely of metal and which has four arms with hands tipped with scalpel-like finger blades. Its body is covered with an array of blades and thorns and its eyes are multifaceted and give off a vivid red glow. While the Shrike's motives are unknown, it is said in legend that the monster can travel through time and that it impales its victims on a giant metal tree called the Tree of Pain. Some believe the Shrike will one day loose its fury on the galaxy as divine punishment for humanity's sins. In the fall of Hyperion, Mina Gladstone becomes a full character through her own point of view, rather than as an abstract name as in the first novel. Every age fraught with discord and danger seems to spawn a leader meant only for that age, a political giant whose absence, in retrospect, seems inconceivable when the history of that age is written. Mina Gladstone is the CEO of the Senate of the Hegemony of Man during the opening of the Time Tombs and the ouster invasion on the planet Hyperion. Before becoming a politician, Gladstone was a lawyer, and as CEO she finds she must walk a fine line between working to combat the Technocore's dominance over human life and the death of human-led science and discovery, and maintaining society and order across the world web. 
Another perspective which joins the characters in The Fall of Hyperion is that of the Cybrid Joseph Seven. A Cybrid is an entity resulting from the fusion of an AI consciousness with a human body. The body of a Cybrid is totally human with human DNA and more or less normal physiology, but its consciousness is located in the Technocore. Only a handful of Cybrids have ever been created, and each one is required to be registered with the hegemony. Seven is the second Cybrid John Keats AI retrieval persona, the first being carried by Braun Lamia in a storage device implant called a Shrone Loop. The personality retrieval project was a technical effort to create an AI with a human personality at its core. The personality is typically a historical figure with some relevance to the future of humanity or with some characteristic of interest to the technical. Interestingly, the second Cybrid John Keats takes the name Joseph Seven as homage to the English painter and personal friend of the famous English poet John Keats, who died in 1821. The Fall of Hyperion abandons the Chaucer-esque storytelling frame structure of Hyperion and instead primarily uses Severn's dreams to tell the story of the pilgrims. In his dreams, Severn witnesses what happens to the pilgrims once they reach the Valley of the Time Tombs and finally confront the Shrike. Severn reports these dreams to Mina Gladstone, allowing the government to have real-time access to information about the pilgrims, while the ousters begin a counter-attack on the world web itself, and Mina Gladstone sees the terrible culmination of her moves and counter-moves. There will be no further misuse of this channel. You are disturbing others who are using it to serious purpose. Access will be restored when you understand what it is for. Goodbye.